Thank you for joining this lesson. Remember for individualized revision, you can reach us through 0704-153-366. The diagram below shows a picture of a machine that produces x-rays. Use it to answer the questions that follow. So we got a machine here used to produce x-rays. We're going to use it to answer the questions that will follow. And some of the questions are part A. Explain how x-rays are produced for two marks. It is good to know that uh, x-rays are produced when a beam of fast moving electrons is stopped by a hard target. But now we cannot begin from the beam of electrons being stopped. We should explain the source of these electrons and they are produced by thermionic emission. Therefore, you should say by thermionic emission or through thermionic emission, through thermionic emission, electrons are emitted from the cathode. Electrons are emitted or dislodged from the cathode. From, from the cathode. They are emitted from the cathode. Something else we should know is that now the beam of fast moving electrons the beam of fast moving electrons is stopped stopped by a hard target by a hard target producing x-rays So that is how we produce x-rays. Remember to subscribe to this channel and to share the link with friends. In part B, we got a part one, which says the machine is almost entirely surrounded by a metal shield. Name this metal and explain why this metal must surround it. Therefore, the metal that uh, surrounds the x-ray machine is usually lead metal. This lead. That is, uh, first of all, we are mentioning. We mentioned it's lead. Why is it preferred? So, lead metal is preferred due to its high density. Due to its high density, which enables it to absorb. which enables it to absorb enables it to absorb stray x-rays stray x-rays and safeguarding the person operating the machine Remember, <clears throat> x-rays are harmful to the skin and to the cells of a human body therefore the person operating the machine if it's not guarded well, if it's not guarded by a high density metal, and for this case lead, actually it should be thick lead, then uh, the person operating will be endangered. Therefore, to ensure that stray x-rays do not penetrate, we use lead material, which has high density state the reason why the cathode ray or the cathode is concave shaped. Why is the, the cathode concave shaped? So as we see the cathode here, this is the cathode. This is the cathode. It is concave in shape. Why is it so? This is to ensure or this is to direct the emitted electrons the emitted 
electrons to the target or to the anode which attracts them to the target so that is why it is concave in shape then uh, part two explain the function of the radiator fins in the radiator fins uh-huh <clears throat> in facilitating the cooling of the anode target the radiator fins so we got radiator fins here why are they fair in a, or how do they aid in cooling the anode target and uh, we should say that uh, they increase surface area for cooling the fins increase surface area for cooling they increase surface area for cooling because uh, the radiator fins are made of copper and copper is a good thermal conductor therefore these fins made of copper will absorb a lot of heat uh, probably from the oil the circulating oil and uh, they will uh, they will transmit the heat very fast from the anode it is called dispersion of heat therefore they dissipate the heat very fast from the anode and cooling takes place because they are many they increase surface area for cooling so that is uh, the concept there state the adjustment that should be made in order to produce x-rays of higher strength for x uh, for, for x-rays to be of higher strength or rather higher energy what we should uh, adjust or the adjustment that should be made is to make sure that uh, we increase the potential difference between the anode and the cathode so remember the potential difference between the anode and the cathode is the one that ensures that x-rays not even x-rays but the beam of produced electrons has been accelerated towards the anode so for a greater acceleration we need a greater potential difference that means now the produced x-rays or the produced beam of electrons is going to be greatly attracted and hence will come with a lot of kinetic energy such that now the x-rays which will get produced by conversion of this energy will also be possessing a greater energy and hence a higher strength therefore increasing potential difference is the one that increases the acceleration of produced electrons and hence the produced x-rays will be having a greater strength or a higher strength finally we are told uh, that the tube operates at 50 kilovolts and the tube current is 20 milliamperes calculate the number of electrons hitting the target per second calculate the number of electrons hitting the target per second so the first thing we should calculate is charge the charge of the electrons and charge is given by it this is uh, the current which is a uh, 20 milliamperes so you can have it uh, divided by a thousand then times in one second we're going to get 20 times 10 power negative 3 uh, coulombs so this is the charge of the electrons produced in one second because we got the current and per second means in one second now the charge of an electron which is written like this the charge of an electron is usually 1.6 multiplied by 10 to the power of negative 19 coulombs so we will say one electron has a charge equivalent to 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 coulombs so how many electrons will be in a charge of 
20 times 10 power negative 3, or rather 2.0 times 10 times 10 to the power of negative 2. Yeah, times 10 to the power of negative 2 coulombs. So how many electrons will be here? To be 2.0 times 10 power negative 2 divided by 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19. This is going to be, when I take 2, divide by 1.6, this gives me 1.25. Multiplied by 10, raised to the power of, we have negative 2, but when 19 goes up, it will become a plus. So negative 2 plus 19 becomes a positive 17. electrons so this is the number of electrons which will be produced